Okay, this next one is going to be going back and thinking about uh, fluency and how it's uh, connected to the ideas that come before it and what it leads to. So we know that, remember, fluent readers are able to read the proper speed, accuracy, and expression. And so therefore, they're able now to focus, uh, shift away from foundational ideas. And once they have that fluency, they're able to focus more uh, energy into comprehension, right? And learning new words or, um, or uh, understanding the text structure or using some type of metacognitive reading comprehension strategy. So students that are more fluent are able to focus on comprehension. And students that are less fluent or have gaps in fluency, they've got to go back and they've got to address what the gap is. Um, maybe it has something to do with phonics. There's a gap in some type of decoding uh, strategy of some sort. So they got to go back and they got to learn all those uh, decoding rules and all those syllable patterns to fix it. So if they're advanced, if, they're if they have fluency, they can move on. If they're lacking fluency, they got to go back and fix some foundational ideas. And sometimes that's things with phonics, letter sound correspondence. Sometimes that's things with sounds. Sometimes it's using a strategy. Sometimes it's just building up speed with high frequency words. So we got to figure out, they've got to go back and figure out what it is that's holding them back. Okay. All right. With that idea, I want you to read this question. This is a short question. I give you one minute. This is from that older 190 test from the Foundations of Reading. It's short, but still good. One minute on your own. Go. Unpause. Hopefully you pause me. Always pause. Okay. You notice it's second grade, right? Second grade, right in that, right in that zone. A second grade teacher notices that one of her students lacks fluency. Circle that fluency. When reading aloud, the first thing the teacher should do in order to help student, this student is access. A second grade teacher notices that one of her students lacks fluency when reading aloud. So let's circle that fluency and second grade or we're right in this zone right here, right? The first thing the teacher should do in order to help this student is assess whether the student also has difficulties with, so we notice there's a gap in fluency. Is it something where we jump ahead? Maybe we focus on predicting, inferring metacognition. By the way, these are all things that we would be working on in comprehension. Do we jump ahead to comprehension or do we have to go back? Do we go back and we have to clarify decoding possibly? This is what we would check first. Is there an issue? First thing we would check is, is there an issue in a specific decoding skill? Now, sometimes it's not decoding. Maybe it could be comprehension. Maybe they're just not familiar with the subject matter. And so in reading a text and being unfamiliar, not having that background knowledge or schema, it could very well be possible that it has something to do with background knowledge. They're just on for or text structure, right? But before we even do that, before we assess that, we want to look to see is there is there any noticeable phonics gaps? Okay. Um, um, if there is, if there are phonics gaps, we got to address them. Okay. Maybe the student is not having any issues with phonics gaps. Maybe it is a, a schema thing meaning they lack the background knowledge, or maybe maybe it's a vocabulary thing. You know, we'll have to assess that. But first, you always want to check to see if you see it, if you see they're lacking fluency, is there an issue in their decoding or letter sound correspondence? This is a good question. It's short, but it covers a lot of ideas. You get a review of these ideas, right? And, and it's not reading comprehension, which would involve some of these ideas here. So let's clarify some of these reading comprehension, there's predicting and inferring. So these are a little bit more advanced reading comprehension strategies. Metacognition is reading, in, uh, not reading in between, in between the lines, it's thinking about your thinking. So we do metacognition, uh, active reading comprehension strategies as a, uh, a type of best practice. We do these things before, during, and after reading where a student interacts with the text. So metacognitive strategies are always where the student is interacting with the text to build meaning. Usually we see them um, during the reading process, but you can do things 
interact and think about the text before. You can do interact with the text even after. But a lot of times we see metacognitive strategies like, like um, um, questioning to understand or visualization, you know, or annotating, m making notes on the page as you read. We see this type of stuff as the student's reading. So these are all falling into, these ideas are all falling into the reading comprehension zone. And when a student lacks fluency, we gotta got to go back and focus on maybe uh, checking decoding and phonics. Okay. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Now these are all, these are all, these aren't bad phonics fluency questions. Let's, uh, let's do a little harder one. Let's keep going.